Hi. Now you can applaud. Applaud, applaud, applaud. Okay, great. I am Nancy Friedman, founder and chairman of Telephone Doctor Customer Service Training, St. Louis, Missouri, and I'm so proud to have Central Bank with us today. Uh, I've not met anybody here unless somebody says, well, I met you 40 years ago. I don't know why you don't remember, uh, but if you, if we have met or our paths have crossed, uh, come on in. They're, the only rule here is to have fun. That's why we're here today, to have fun and refresh and clean out our heads and get a couple tips, ideas, skills, and techniques. Uh, just for you that may or may not, well, may not be familiar with Telephone Doctor, we are an international customer service training company. And bottom line, it's very simple. The elevator speech is we help companies communicate better with their customers, sales, customer service, and uh, communication skills. <laughs> I have so much on my mind. Anybody else here ADD? Because you got to follow the bouncing ball. If you're ADD, you'll, you'll say, ah, that was a great program. She covered everything. That's because I do, but it's just not necessarily in order. All righty. So that you understand the game of life here, uh, we have golden nuggets to share with you. And the golden nuggets have been chosen. Here they all, whoops, here they all are. Chosen by Ruth and probably Laura and maybe a few other people. A golden nugget is just a simple little laminated piece, and I'll show you how we're going to play it in a moment. If How many are familiar, and I can only see one screen here, uh, with what we call the Kazan method of training? It's a Japanese method of training, and what it means is little pieces of information for continuous improvement. And that's what I believe in. So this is not a long lecture. I've never used the word seminar in my life. This is just a fun Zoom program with little pieces of information for continuous improvement. Everything I share here today is for not only you, your coworker, your mother, your father, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your partner, your husband, your wife, your, your kids. There's not a technique that I will share with you that cannot be used to anybody you interact with, even people we don't know. And it's we play it very simply. Uh, I used to have a big golden nugget bag, but it hid my it hid me when I started doing Zoom meetings. So we I went to my wine bar, which I thought was very clever. I went to my wine bar and I got two wine glasses and I put all the nuggets in them and we shake them up. Now, when we shake them up, of course, they get mixed up. Really, I know what's in here. What I don't know is how they're going to come out one by one. So the first nugget I'm going to say, go. where did Alan go with the sexy voice? Nathan, I'm sorry. Alan, you have a sexy voice too. But Nathan, I'm going to pretend this is your poll. Ready? Really, I'm ready. Okay, it's really good. I love that voice. Okay. What do you do at Central? Are you Obviously, I hope you're in touch with clients. Um, mortgage processing. Mortgage processing. Would that um, allow you to talk with clients? Some, mostly my dog is who hears me more throughout Your the day. Dog. So, what yeah. Kind of, what kind of dog do you have? A uh, little dachshund. Oh, they're so cute. Okay. Yeah, get off topic a little. So, I'm going to have Nathan be my Nancy focus. Okay. We're going to start off with fun. Again, you can ask any question anytime. Thought wave, tip, idea, skill, or technique. You will not be an interruption. You are the very reason I am here for Central Bank. And thank you, Ruth, ahead of time, and Lauren Martin uh, for this wonderful opportunity. All right, so here goes. I know what's in here. I just don't know how they're going to come out. All right. Oh, I live by this. I live by this. And this is on my makeup mirror at home. You can all see it. If not, oof, oof. humor, energy, and enthusiasm. Humor, energy, and enthusiasm. Now, for those of you who are writing down, perfectly acceptable. But number one, you're going to get the recording. Number two, we send out a what is called a one-liner of the, the technique and then the one-liner explanation. And the reason we send it out is because sometimes, not saying you, but sometimes people don't write the right things down. They write things that they think they heard. I was at a program once and I peered over somebody's shoulder. I said, what is that? He said, well, that's the notes. You told me to take notes. I said, I told you, you don't have to take notes because I will provide the notes. What you just wrote, I've never said in my life. So he pr processed his own thoughts down on paper and thought it was. So you're going to get a one-liner. You're going to go to Ruth. You'll get a sheet of paper with, with the technique we use and the one-liner. But this humor, energy, and enthusiasm, 
Uh, if we did, well, there's so many, I love all the nuggets that you chose, Ruth and, and Laura, they, they're all wonderful, but this, without humor, energy, and enthusiasm, we just don't have, we don't have a connection, we don't have a relationship, we just don't have very much, so it's part of my life, I live it very easily, it's not easy for everybody to add humor, energy, and enthusiasm in their life, you gotta like what you do, you know, my father taught me years ago, find a job you love, and you'll never work a day in your life, uh, I'm going to assume you all are happy campers there. Having worked with with Ruth just a minute minute amount of time, she's got she's got the humor, energy, and enthusiasm that I love, and that's those kind of people bond with each other. Now I know you get all sorts of people coming in and calling out. You may not get somebody with humor, energy, and enthusiasm. That doesn't mean we need to lose what we have. So. It's real important that you keep your energy, humor, and enthusiasm. And if you think to yourself, well, what if it's not funny? What if it's a serious thing? I've just never met anybody who didn't enjoy somebody with a little bit of humor, a little bit of energy, and a little bit of enthusiasm. So even if you use just a smidgen of it, you'll be in a better place. That's a golden nugget. It takes maybe a minute or two to go over. Some of them are a little longer. Anybody agree or disagree with our, our golden nugget number one for that we Nathan pulled out for us? Well, we pretended he did. Uh, energy, humor, and enthusiasm. That's a great start to the program, Nathan. Thank you for picking it out. Ah, good job, good job. Okay, here we go. We're shaking them up again. And we'll see what we can pick out this time. Oop, one, only one, Nancy, only one. Oh, this you never get. I rate customers. <laughs> oh, you never get them. So I'm just going to skip that part. Okay. We all get them. And Nancy forgot to put her. I need to go over here and get my, uh, I felt tip pen. BRB is like, oh, you can't see my, that's my kitchen behind this green screen. Now you know the secret. Shoot. Okay. I got it. So my daughter said, don't, don't squinch in your chair because the, the kitchen will be there. I said, well, everybody knows I've got a kitchen. What's a big deal? All right. All right. So how do you handle the irate caller, customer? Can you see this ASAP? Yeah. Now, some of you are going to say, oh, she wants us to handle it as soon as possible. Well, of course I do, but that's not what this means. And Ruth, I don't think you've had the uh, pleasure of, of getting a demo for our service skills, but this is covered in our service skills e-learning platform. This A, <laughs> this A stands for acknowledge and apologize immediately. When we're dealing with somebody who's upset, the apology and the acknowledgement of what happened is key and only key. So that's the first thing. And an and acknowledgement, has to be, we apologize. You don't want to be sorry. Sorry is when somebody steps on your toe. Oh, I'm so sorry. You step on somebody's toe. Oh, I'm so sorry. If we screwed up, if we did something wrong, or they perceive us as doing something wrong, which is usually the case, it's we apologize. That's immediate. We apologize for, for this, whatever it happens to be. So that, ooh, Nancy, get ready. This stands, the S stands for sympathize, and empathize. Now, not a lot of people know the difference between sympathy and empathy. So I can only see one screen at a time. So I'm gonna use my first screen. Uh, you will, I don't know if you can tell if I can hear it or not, but just raise your hand. Look, here's the difference. Who there sitting in this audience has ever had open heart surgery? Open heart surgery. Raise your hand. I don't see that. Okay, I don't see it. So I, all right, well, bottom line, I did. I had open heart surgery, I had a valve replacement. So that means you're not gonna really able to empathize with me because you haven't been through it. You didn't go through it and you there's no way in God's green earth you can understand what somebody went through when you didn't experience it. So to say, I understand, or I know how you feel when you haven't been there, it's almost rude. It's, in, it's just rude. Now you can sympathize and should sympathize when something goes wrong and you, you have an irate customer. That's gotta be frustrating. I, you know, I hate when that happens, we'll fix it for you. So the, the sympathy and, and empathy is important, 
But if you say to somebody, I totally understand how you feel. Here's an example. I called my cable company and it, nothing was working. And she says to me, oh, Mrs. Friedman, you know, they're scripted. Oh, Mrs. Friedman, I know exactly. And she used the word exactly. She said, I know exactly how you feel. I said, really? Has this ever happened to you? She said, well, no. But I said, well, don't know about me because if it hasn't happened to you, you don't know what I'm going through. And my husband says, stop trying to train people one by one by one by one. So I, I, I don't do that anymore. But when people say, oh, I understand what you, what you mean or understand how you feel, just be careful of that one because the sympathy and empathy is important. This A stands for accept the, accept the responsibility immediately. No excuses. It, you know, when the customer thinks you're wrong, you're wrong. That's the end of the subject even though you're not that's that's what it is but you can fix it and usually can fix it and that's what you gotta get across let me accept the responsibility here however the other thing i'm going to accept is how to fix this mrs jones so let me get on that right away they need to hear the ending real important and this piece stands for prepared to help now if if we could just go from accepting and acknowledging or excuse me acknowledging and apologizing down to prepare to help all of our calls will go a lot faster, but because we need a little sympathy in there, a little little soft petting, scooping, you know, getting close to them, and accepting because they need you to accept what you what you have done, which you you haven't done. Something happened with the machine or a piece of paper or something. Handling upset, irate callers isn't fun, although believe it or not, I've made it into fun. Fortunately. Uh, that we at telephone doctor and service skills don't, com, don't get a lot of irate customers uh, because all of our people have the energy, humor, and enthusiasm. So when you call our office, it's a party. It, it's just a fun place. And you think you might think to yourself, well, how can we make you know central a fun? It is, it should be a fun place. I mean, I, except for right now, but Rachel, you look great. Okay, thank you. I can't do that. My hair is so short, I can just pull it out here. <laughs> okay, so questions on ASAP or questions on handling irate customers. Uh, the first thing is a, an apology, and that that's it's a good thing to do. But if you just say, "Oh, I'm so sorry about that," and by the way, sorry about that is a is a please don't do that. That's a McDonald's term. You get the wrong hamburger, they say, "Oh, sorry about that." Like they're throwing you away to the wolves. So, oh my gosh, we apologize. I apologize. I will get on that as soon as possible. I'll get on that right away. I know how to fix it. I know somebody who can fix it. And that's what they need to hear. Yes. Questions on that? Please, please, please. My chat box. Who's, where's Jessica? No, it was Jessica. Who's doing my chat for me? Your chat box is clear. Oh, shoot. Nancy? Yes. This is, is it better from an organization like ours to say I apologize or we apologize? I was hoping you'd bring that up. I use we because it's in a total. Uh, except when the if if it was something that you did, you know, my goodness, I apologize. That is my mistake. And I'm taking ownership on that one. And for whatever reason. When you say that with a smile, it helps. Well, it, I, I'm not sure if it goes away if the customer just collapses, but I know that if you can keep a smile on your face when you're talking with someone, example, this whole program, my mission is to keep a smile on my face because I don't want to sit there. Yeah, and later when we take a picture and we're taking a picture, I don't want to be the one that's going. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like, show, you know, show me a picture you don't like of yourself and I'll show you a picture where you're not smiling. So anyway, when you're working with the, with the upset client, stay away from, I know how you feel. You can say, this is so frustrating for you. You know, my apologies, I apologize, our apologies, I will get it fixed. And that's, I mean, that's the condensed version of what they want to hear. I made the ASAP long so you understood and got the maintain. I'm going to assume because you're all look intelligent and i know that uh ruth has spoke so well of the the whole team across the country that uh it's not that you don't get irate customers does anybody have a a, a thought or an idea of something you've used that maybe i could learn from 
because I learn from every one of these programs. Uh, I, I'm not perfect. Well, sometimes I am, but I'm not perfect. <laughs> Uh, and I, I, I love to learn. I'm a lifelong learner and I learn from my clients. I learn from everybody. So again, if you have something that you've used that works, lay it on us. All righty. ASAP. That was a good one. I like that. All right. Here's another one. Let's see what we got. Whoa. I think this is one you wanted, Ruth, real bad. <laughs> Don't you, let me put this, in. Don't use company jargon military language and come don't use military language on civilians that's what it says <laughs> don't use military language on civilians and what that means is your industry is filled with little letters and ideas and things that we as customers don't understand throw me anybody have a a, a use that, you know like a hey did you get the dd thor d d d d t i d t i what is LTD, it? LTV. LTD. Happy birthday. I who the uh, hell? Long, long to value. All right. Yeah. Long to value. And it's interesting because I've spoken at several major mortgage uh, conferences across the years, and uh, I learned a lot and I did forget a lot of it, but they love the part when I said, stop using military language on civilians, and they didn't quite understand. I said, I'm a civilian. <laughs> I may have never had a mortgage. I may have never had to go through the experience. And you're using words that you use not only every single day, but every single day for years and years and years. So it's real easy for you, but it's difficult for the person you're talking with. And it's okay to say to them, stop me if I use a term that you're not understanding. It's better not to use three letters. It's better to say, this is a, for your information, we call it an FYI. You know, somebody said, do you have your CAN number? I said, I, I, what's a CAN number? You know, I have my CAN with me. Well, I don't understand. Customer account number. Well, I mean, that's that's what happens. Is, and that's why there's miscommunications, boys and girls, because we start using, you know, your language on, on normal, not that you're not normal, on customers. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So no military language on civilians when they come in. I mean, even somebody who's had a mortgage before or gone through, or there might be something new that's come up. They may not remember what that is. Uh, they don't want a lesson necessarily. They just they just want to understand what's going on. Oh, so one just fell on the floor, Ruth. I'm not picking it up. Okay. <laughs> This is the six touch points of communication. And I believe why we brought that up is because everything I'm sharing with you, everything goes into the six touch points of communication, which are email, voicemail, snail mail, phone, fax, face-to-face. -face. Okay, seven, text. So whatever line, whatever channel of communication you choose to use with anybody, again, mother, father, girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife, kids, whatever channel you're using with them, there are six touch points of communication. I just had a moment there. This is so ADD. Is anybody watching the Murdoch trials? <laughs> I say, the defense lawyer, where do you see him? He absolutely should not be in that industry. <laughs> I, I can't I wish you had seen it this morning it, anyway bottom line six touch points of communication so whether you're doing an email or you're sending a text or you're on the phone with somebody all these techniques every single one of them that I've so far used and will be using happens to be in all touch points of communication and you'll be glad you have them when you when you remember them all righty here we go Okay, well, oh my goodness. I wonder why Ruth picked this speaker speaker phone. <laughs> Anybody tell me why she chose that? Or Ruth want to say it or just like you just like the word speaker phone? <laughs> now, now I I end up using the speaker phone a lot and I know that sometimes it's easier for me, but I don't know about everybody else. Well, you just said something very important. It's easier for you. And I'm going to assume that you did. Whoever you're talking with, we ask them, are you okay with me being on the speakerphone? 
without asking permission, that's an inconvenience because some people don't like it. And you should say, I am alone in my office. You know, do you have any objection if, if I use my speakerphone? Ask me what I think of answering it on the first call with the speakerphone. You won't like my answer at all. Yeah. What is it? What is it? <laughs> I would not use a speakerphone on an initial greeting. An initial greeting is private and personal, and that's how it needs to be. Now, as you talk with someone, it's okay to say, uh, Ruth, I'm going to be needing two hands to type something up. Are you okay with me putting you on a speakerphone? It's a yes or a no. And otherwise, you know, typing with one hand is very difficult. So always, always ask. Speakerphones don't bother most people. And the reason I, I had that even on the list, most of, in fact, all of our, you know, most most of our uh, tips that, that were on the, the golden nugget list come from, oh, <laughs> I got I've got a very fancy note on my door and somebody came to ask me something and says don't knock and he was just in a knock and I it never mind. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I feel like the defense attorney. I lost my track of thought. <laughs> <laughs> speaker phones. Just be sure you ask somebody. Are you okay with the speaker phone? I need to use both hands. Uh, I had a boss a long time ago. I worked in Chicago. I'm born and raised in Chicago and I worked at WGN television for many years. And I had a boss who I left it to go to another job, but we stayed in touch. And I always called him and he would always answer on that first call. Hello, it was very echoey. And you could always tell when somebody's on the speaker phone and he would always do it no matter when they called, whatever time of day, hello. I said, Jim, please don't use the speakerphone. Please. No, I like the speakerphone. And every next call, hello. I said, please don't use the speakerphone. <laughs> so here's what I did. I called him one day and he said, hello. And I said, I'm in room 324. Come over now. And he picked it up. <laughs> he said, why would you do that? I said, why would you do the speakerphone? I told you not to. And he said, I could have had somebody in my office. I said, well, that's why you don't do it on the initial greeting. You don't know what the other person's going to say. So well, lesson learned for him, shall we say, lesson learned. So Ruth, if you use the speakerphone, absolutely fine. I'm going to assume that you did say, Nancy, I'm, I'm just going to put you on the speakerphone. Are you, are you okay with that? Uh, there, are some people, okay. <laughs> there are some people who don't like it. Uh, that you got to deal with. Okay, so I'm glad that was, that was out there. All righty. This is out. Oh, why did you pick this one? <laughs> well, obscene phone calls. I love them. Why did you pick them? Do we get them at work? I think that there have been over the years, there has been mentions that sometimes that has occurred. I'll just well, good. All right, then I'm glad you did it because every office gets them. It seems to me it's it's far less now than than it ever has been. I mean, it used it used to be. I can understand why, but for whatever reason, uh, I haven't. Somebody get me, send me an obscene phone call. I haven't had one in a long time. No, just <laughs> kidding. Just kidding. Uh, the worst thing to do on a, when you get somebody with an obscene phone call is to interact with them. So gently hang up the phone if they're swearing at you if they're saying obscene things do just gently hang up the phone slamming the phone down excites them they know you're agitated but they don't know when you simply hang up and now with cell phones you can't bang at that little dot on there <laughs> there's no way to hang up bad but quickly you can quickly you can so that's a fairly good way. I don't know how many of his landlines anymore, but that was the best way to quickly, gently hang up. Now we just, you know, I haven't gotten any recently, but if you want to hang up on somebody, I just hit that little red dot and they go away. And then I believe you can block them if they seem to call back. So uh, they're not fun to get. They're scary. You know, I have, I have funny stories about obscene phone calls, but I want this time to be about you, not me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, one of my favorites. I say favorites a lot here because I love this game. I love the nuggets. I love everyone on the list. And she, there were seven pages, about 25 or 30 golden nuggets on each page. And Ruth went through them all. Trust me. 
This one is good, killer words of customer service. My husband is the uh, author of most of our, tele well, all of the Telephone Doctor customer service training programs on our e-learning, which is serviceskills.com. And Ruth, we do want you to have a demo on that. And his last program that he wrote a couple of years ago, pre-COVID was killer words of customer service. Words that will kill, kill the conversation. They, they really will. And I'll give you a few of them. I won't go into all of them. And the first one is, and a drum roll, please. And, you know, I say, we didn't make these up. I do these surveys all the time. If I wanted to today at the end of the program, if I had a question, I could do a survey with this group because you're large enough and I could get votes on what's going on in, in the world of communications, but so far not. Anyway, the number one killer word of customer service is when somebody says to you, thanks so much, I really appreciate your help. And you say to them, no problem. I guarantee you that's going to be a difficult one to change. But the minute you say no problem to someone, they think, what am I, a problem? Am I a problem? I didn't think I was a problem. So what happened to what your mother taught you? You're welcome. Our pleasure. Have you ever been to Chick-fil-A? Yes. All right. I don't have to go any further. You get the wrong, you get the wrong order. It it and and they say or you they say thank you you say thank you they go my pleasure you know it just it's a way of life with some people but no problem is a big problem and if you take nothing out of here today with 15, 25 golden nuggets get those two words out of your life another one that is not healthy to tell somebody when you're in a and this really goes for more personal than than business but it can work with all two people are having a Let's not call it an argument, but uh, let's just call it a friendly discussion, but one's getting more heated than the other. And that happens sometimes when voices get raised and words come out that aren't meant. And the other person said to them, now just, just calm down, just calm down. Well, that will ignite the fire a little further because nobody has ever calmed down when they have been told to calm down. It is just not effective. I don't know, especially in a marriage especially in a marriage, you tell your husband or your girlfriend or your boyfriend, hey, calm down, baby. I, I'm not, I am calm down. <laughs> Don't you tell me to calm down. You calm down. And then you got another <laughs> argument over here when the argument, real argument was over here. So, and those are only two of the killer words, but those are the two biggies. And if you do get on serviceskills.com on our platform and you watch killer words of customer service, you will remember these. But the bottom line, when somebody tells you, thank you, you know, my pleasure. You're well. You're welcome. Didn't your mother say? I mean, teach you that she can, she slapped you around until you finally said, "Tell the lady, thank you." So, <laughs> no problem is a huge issue, and there's no way I could make you stop, but I can ask you and tell you that it's just it's not it's not complimentary. It's not needed. It's not wanted. I would well. I don't know y'all well enough, so. Can't, can't go there. <laughs> okay. This is a wonderful feeling to have. Be grateful for what you have. I usually like to end with the program with this, but I pulled it out and that's fine. Uh, I'm not a preacher. I don't pretend to be one, but I, I don't have a lot of patience for complainers or blamers. And when people start complaining and they all you have to do is look around and see what's around you and there's somebody worse off than you. So I don't understand all the complaining that goes on in the world. I mean, I had the valve problem. I had lung cancer. Somebody had it worse. Somebody had it worse. I was grateful that I didn't have chemo. I was grateful that I didn't have to have radiation. I was grateful that they got it all out. So if you start being grateful for things, Life goes on a little smoother. I love that one. Be grateful for what you have. Anybody specially grateful today for something? I love to hear grateful stories. Deanne, what's up? I, unmute yourself, baby. I'm grateful every day that I work here. Oh. <laughs> Ruth, did you hear that? Request for a raise. <laughs> That's a very, very lovely thing. I would imagine 99% of the people would say the same thing. 
Um, well, I'm grateful for every day she works here too. <laughs> there are, yeah, there are uh, places that I work with and I get the feeling that, you know, I, what I'm hearing is the laughter and I'm hearing you know, people who pop in and say, hey, I'm grateful because I work here. Uh, what city are you in, Deanna? I'm in Asheville, North Carolina. Asheville. I got friends going to move there. Well, it's getting full. Tell them to get I know. Your I, <laughs> I, I've been there once or twice, but not enough to see what's what's the fun thing. Good for you. Thanks for coming on with us. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. You're not going to catch me with that saying no problem. Okay. I know you're waiting. Not going to happen. <laughs> I'd, I'd probably sooner drop the F-bomb than, than say no problem. <laughs> no problem. That's awesome. Okay. This came from my husband because he had a problem called people before paperwork. He was standing and I forget somewhere. And whoever was trying going to help him was continuing to do their paperwork. And he waited and... He's not a patient man, but he, he did wait, I would say maybe five, six, seven minutes. And he started to interrupt her. And she goes, I'll be right with you. And it's, this is after he waited while she fiddled with her papers and had to finish them. So remember, people before paperwork. Somebody comes up to your desk, whether it's the president or a customer or whatever, drop the paperwork. It will still be there. You will still have it. But the customer can go away. When the customer goes away, because of something that we did, they get to tell some other people and the situation goes around and around. And it's even just a nicety to do, you know, for, for your, in, a, in your home. We, some mm -hmm. of us work at, at home or we're writing something and somebody comes up, you know, we always go, oh, just let me finish this. Just let me finish this. Just stop. You finish it later. End of rant. <laughs> How's my chat box going? Jessica? It's still clear. I guess that's good news, huh? I don't, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, no news is good news. That's what I'm doing today. All right, what do we got here? Oh, I love this. <laughs> do we have caller ID at Central? No. Yes. Yes. Yes and no. Well, we had it, I took it out. Why'd you take it out, Nancy? Listen carefully. We had caller ID a telephone doctor many years ago when it first came out, had to have it, everybody had to have it. And all of a sudden one day my secretary who was with me for a hundred years, seems like it anyway, came in, big elephant tears. She's crying hysterically, hysterically. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 no. Well, here's what happened. Her phone rang and up came the caller ID listed as her husband and her husband, excuse me, her fiance and her fiance's phone number. So she picked it up and said something terribly inappropriate and terribly personal. Well, you're right. It wasn't her fiance. It was her fiance's boss. So she got to say these wonderful private things to somebody she'd never met, the guy's boss. And she's crying, crying. And I said, Jeannie, what's the ground rules? Here? What, what is it? We should always answer the phone the same way professionally. So why did you go off the reservation? I thought, yeah, don't even finish that, I thought, because you didn't think. You assumed that just because it said who it was, it was them. Our cell phones always say who it is, Dick calling. I have yet to say, hi, Dick, or hi, sweetie, or what are you wearing? I've just never said that. <laughs> because sometimes, sometimes Dick hands the phone to somebody else and says, here, Call Nancy, you know, and ask her. I just, you know, I don't have a minute. And I get Dick calling and it's not, it's not him. So don't assume those of you who do have caller ID, pick it up the same way professionally every single time. Um, there is a letdown when you call a company and they go, hi, Mrs. Friedman. It's like, I wanted it to be a surprise. <laughs> I didn't want to. I saw that I just posted on LinkedIn. Oh, by the way, if you are on LinkedIn, link in with me. I, I'm pretty active on LinkedIn uh, and love it. I just, you know, I remember the time when I had a phone on the wall and you picked up the phone when it rang and you never knew who it was. So I don't know if anybody has that memory. 
where you didn't get to find out who it was. But just remember, it may not always be the person that it says it is. So professionally, all the time, and a, and a rant, as they say. All right, we're getting along there. Let's see. We're doing good, Ruth. We, can, we may finish this. All right. Yay. Yay, yay, yay. Uh, you are, whoops, you are an interruption. Why did you pick that, Ruth? Because we, uh, there are many of us that while we are working, we are interrupted by various things. So I thought we could talk about that. Let's talk about that. That's good. Um, there is, in my mind, a difference between somebody who interrupts and somebody who interjects. Mm -hmm. Does anybody understand the difference? Mm -hmm. An interrupter takes over the conversation. They interrupt, they want to talk more. An interjector, which I like to think I am, but my husband says, no, you're an interrupter. <laughs> <laughs> But my feeling is I like to add to the conversation, not take over, but add to it. Uh, but no matter what happens, when somebody else is talking or working, we are an interruption. I knew what she meant. I shouldn't say what did she mean by that. Uh, now, if things interrupt you, like what would interrupt you? Uh, around an, an emergent, timely situation that needs to be prioritized instantly regardless of what you're currently working on okay well that that's a fair analogy so you're working on something and a customer calls or the boss comes in they are interrupting you how do you handle it i'm not at a loss but i, I don't want to share something that might not be in the lines of central bank so who wants to be brave enough to say here's how i handle it okay i'll bribe you First one to say it gets a book. <laughs> Anybody? Well, we had a situation yesterday. In our industry, if somebody is buying a home and getting a loan for the purchase of a home, and they're sitting at that closing with real estate agents, borrowers, title company, and something happens that needs to get corrected on those documents, our position of a, a loan closer needs to stop what they're doing and handle that, regardless of what else is happening. Well, there, you said it better than I could. Having just closed, having just closed on a on two bill, one building, one condo, um, that does it. it at, inter, some people handle interruptions like a breeze, and some people fall apart. So decide what you are. I I don't mind interruptions. I just write down what I was doing and before I forget and say, let me put this aside. And you know, what's what's on your mind? You know, phone calls aren't usually an interruption. Nobody knows what you're doing. <laughs> People who call you very early, six, seven a.m. or you know, late in the evening and say, Oh, I didn't know you're sleeping. Well, how the heck can you know somebody's sleeping? You can't see, you know, before the phone rings if they're sleeping. So they are an interruption. I mean, nobody thinks, oh, good, I think she's sleeping. I'm going to call her now. But yes, I do sleep late. So I you would be an interruption if you call me early in the morning. Fortunately, because of my mentality, you will never know that I'm frustrated. <laughs> I don't know. I always think if somebody thinks enough of me to call, I just I get I, I just never mind it. But I'm not, you know, everybody doesn't have that mentality. So yes, you are an interruption uh when you go into somebody, you know, and that brings me to okay, that's what I wanted to share with you. When you make a phone call to anybody. I don't care who it is, your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, a child, I don't care who it is. When you make a phone call to somebody, if it's the next desk to you, and you don't ask, do you have a quick moment? Have I caught you at a good time? You are an interruption because they weren't, ex they weren't expecting your call. Well, in some cases we are, we make a date for a call, but there isn't a call I make and Ruth will bear it out when I say, is this a good time to talk? That's right. 
that just comes out of my mouth the minute somebody says hello this is mary hi mary it's nancy friedman do you have a quick moment do you have a moment to talk well we had a date to talk yes i do well things happen you know stuff happens with in spite of a zoom meeting or an invite or whatever so this is one i really want you to think about when you make a phone call out to a client or any anybody anybody yeah hi this is rachel from central bank oh because you're wearing red i like red this is Rachel. do you have a moment to talk mrs friedman thank you i mean it's just that simple it's less than five seconds less than five seconds to have somebody say that was nice i appreciate that and believe me they will believe me not everybody does that i mean i get phone call after phone call people trying to sell me stuff Hey, Mrs. Freeman, Dan from Dial America, blah, 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 blah. They, they go on and on and on with that. And then I say, well, you've caught me at a very bad time. And he says, oh, I didn't know that. And I'm thinking, because you didn't ask. <laughs> All right. Okay. I want to hold this one out, but I don't know the time element. I, wanna, I also want to leave time for questions and answers. Uh, that's important to me but this is something you will never see in a dictionary and i want you to write it down right now w-a-c w-a-c-t-e-o w-a-c-t-e-o and it's pronounced wakteo w-a-c-t-e-o what does that mean nancy well again my husband is i think brilliant he would come here, but he's like not shaved and stuff. He'd like to, <laughs> not cam he's not camera ready. Uh, anyway, he, he, when we go out to have a dinner or have a drink, he always doodles and he makes funny things on the napkin. And one day he wrote out W-A-C-T-E-O. And I said, what's that? He said, well, and he just read it out loud. We are customers to each other. Um, Wachteo. And I... We used, well, we still do have some, uh, if you remind me, Ruth, or I will remember to send you a couple bumper stickers that just say Wachteo on them. Uh, they're fun to put up on your office because it's, sometimes it's hard to remember that we are customers to each other and the people that we work with are our first line of customers. And we get aggravated with them and we get along with them and we, you know, all the things that happen to the, with our clients and the people that want us happen and can happen to each other. So if you could just remember Wachteo, W-A-C-T-E-O, to each other, that's a great start getting along. Okay, here we are. Oops. Ah, and isn't this fun? I left. Somebody left over there. I hope she's not having a bad time. <laughs> Can't. Okay, this is weak, wimpy words. <laughs> weak, good. wimpy words. What do you think some of them are? Anybody want to win a book? First one to give me a weak, wimpy word. What's a weak, wimpy word? Just. Did somebody say just? Just. Just. It's one of the weakest. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to get, who said that? Here in, in the large group where Laura and Ruth are at. So who was it? Okay. I was Casey. Casey. It's a winner winner. I'm sending this to Ruth and she can send it to the person who won it. I will autograph it if Ruth tells me, not on here, but on an email, how to spell the person's name. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay, thank you. Oh, you're in the big group, Laura. All right. Yes. All right. So, yeah, just is a very poor choice of words, and there's a list of them. So, when you say to somebody, just a note to thank you for being a customer. You've dismissed the whole idea of the note. Just a note to thank you for the nice Christmas gift. You've dismissed the whole idea of the Christmas gift. The word just just dismisses everything. So do not use it to start a sentence. It is perfectly acceptable to say a note to say thank you. A note to say thank you for the Christmas present. A note to say we're proud to have you as a client. A, no a note to say is far better than just a note because I wasn't doing anything and blah, 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 blah. It's a useless word. Useless word. And it's used so much in trying to sell on LinkedIn. 
it, it's it's sort of sickening. Uh, the other other couple of useless words are, I think you'll be very happy with this. Hmm. Bad bad choice. You know, you will. I believe you will be as better, or you will be very happy with this choice. Nobody should have to think about their choices when they've made done business with you. And this is also very good, again, in your home life. If you can use some of these at home, it really works good. So there's a whole list of them. They'll be on the uh, the one-liner sheet. Uh, you got Ma'am, two of them. Ma'am, two this, of them. Is, this is Laura Martin. What are your thoughts on butt? My butt or the butt? <laughs> I have two thoughts, Laura. It's interesting. As of many years ago, every time I use the word butt on an email, I put I change it to and. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know why I did, uh, other than it reads pretty well. And while we're on that subject, I'm not really... I, very little do I know about the new AI, the chat GTP or whatever it is. Anybody really familiar with it? Getting into it? Well, it, I'm, it's good or bad. I don't know. What I do know is so many times it's wrong. So if you're using it, proofread it, be careful. Uh, a friend of mine calls, I just use it to make a, uh, there's even a gesture you use. You, you don't need it. Just There are some words that are we say, but you don't need them. She says, I use it, it improves the quality of the, the email. Well, if you're that insecure, that you wrote an email that's, in, you know, that's not good enough, I don't know. Uh, I, guess, I guess it's good. I haven't got an opinion on that. But okay. for, the butt, for the butt situation, you, I can tell you that I normally take it out and change it to and. The other thing I like to do, the other word that is usually unnecessary is the word that, T-H-A-T. Watch how many times you use it. Watch how perfect the sentence is without the word that, T-H-A-T. In some cases, it works. The other thing when you're writing, every time I wrote, I write the word it, I make it what it is. I never leave it as it. Nancy, we've got a question in St. Louis from Lisa. Oh, Lisa. Lisa. I have heard, but... You should not use because it just dismisses everything you just told somebody when you're like, mm -hmm. oh, you're doing a good job, but mm -hmm. so then so well, I that, there is a phrase, but is the big eraser. And yeah. it's so that is true. Every time you say but you really erase something. But so I change it to and and it works out fine where you can. Good, 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 good comment. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, St. Louis. All right. We have about 10 minutes. I have a few left. Would you would you allow me to go through and see which are the most important so that we don't miss any? You okay with that? Yes. Okay, yes, thank you. Absolutely. All right, one is that. We don't know that. Oh, that's good. We don't need that. Uh, we don't need that. That. Okay, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna go through these quick. Uh, Everybody in this program, I believe, has a cell phone. And I'm going to bet that everybody whose cell phone is out there has one or more of the five frustrating cell phone phrases. I'll give you what they are. They'll be on a piece of paper. Don't try and write them down right now. If your voicemail says, hi, this is Barbara, and I'm not here right now. Well, that's a hot lot of news. I mean, your voicemail <laughs> You don't need, I'm not here right now. You don't need, I'm not able to answer your call. So that's number one. Number two, I'm sorry I missed your call. Well, you know, sometimes we're not. <laughs> it's That's not necessary. The third one is what we call the groaner. And it's usually used for companies, but some people have it on their cell phones. And it says, your call is very important to me. <laughs> and I'm thinking, then why aren't you there? It's so important. That's that just bugs the heck out of me. The fourth one is, and I call. Go ahead and leave your phone a number. Name a number, and I will return your phone call. What's wrong with that, Nancy? Everybody uses that. Everybody doesn't use that. I don't use it. My husband doesn't use it. So everybody doesn't use that. What's wrong with it is, and I will return your phone call as soon as possible. Everybody's as soon as possible is different. Yours is different from hers. Hers is different from his. 
So as soon as possible doesn't mean anything. If you're going to say that, say, leave your name and phone number, and I will return your call. That's a statement of fact. You don't need as soon as possible. Business people know it's going to be as soon as possible. If, an, if you're going on a vacation, you know, obviously say I'm not, I'm not available for calls, et cetera. You figure that out. I, I'm sure you can as a company. Uh, so be careful on that. And the last of the fifth five professors that you can't, you can't be drinking when you talk like this. <laughs> the five frustrating voicemail phrases is when you don't leave an exit. In other words, you you just say, okay, bye. Think of something. Well, you know, if you're at, if you need another number, you know, here's my here's my uh, my mother's cell, here's my assistant cell, here's my secretary's number, here's my email. One or two other ways to reach you, especially in, in your business with dealing with mortgages, people are going to need you at the last minute and. You, if you just are saying, you know, go ahead and leave your name and I will return your call, have a nice day, is not a good exit line. You need a, I would make it, if I had the power, that everybody at Central would have the same exit line, you know, and my email is, and when you give your email or when you give your another phone number, twice and slowly, twice and slowly, repeat it. Not necessary if you're going to type it out, but if you're going to say it, uh, my phone number is, and most people go, my phone number is 314-276-1012. Thank you very much. And they just <laughs> whiz by it. So just got to be careful. Okay, that, but that, that was good. Email frustrations. I wanted to give you a couple of those. Yeah. Oh, email frustrations. Top one, for a prize. What is the number one frustration for a prize? For a prize. Number one frustration. On email. Not getting it back. Not getting a response back. That's on the list, Nathan. That's on the list. Good for you. Sexy voice. Okay. I'm not answering the full question. On the list. On the list. All caps. On the list. On the list. You're getting close. The number one frustration of emails is poor spelling and grammar. <laughs> Misspelling. Rachel got it. Oh, did she? Uh, yes. <laughs> Rachel? Right before you said it, she said misspelling. Yes, I put it in the chat. Sorry, oh, misspelling. Well, thank you. All right. You will get a book. I'll send it to Ruth, Ruth Rachel. I'm putting that right here. R-A-C-H-E-L-T-O-T-H. Okay. Um, yeah, poor spelling. And I am appalled at the number of poor spellers and poor grammar that's on LinkedIn from top-level executives. Mm -hmm. CEOs with big names are running huge companies, and they don't know the difference between your and your. Yeah. They don't know the difference. They don't know that there's three twos, two, two, and two. I, it, <laughs> I don't know if they went to school. Okay. Those are the, uh, let me close with, let me close with, we can have a QA, and a but I want to close this session off with something that they picked and I want to go over it because it's called the wish statement. And that is when somebody asks you something that you're not able to do. And it could be your family member could be your coworker, and of course your client. They've asked you something, not that it's illegal, but you're, you just know it's not gonna work. And so to say to them, oh, Mrs. Friedman, I wish I could. I really wish I could. That's just not an option we have. And that closes the door using their name. I wish we could. It's just not an option we have. Now, some of these we use at home in a very, for lack of a better word, humorous way. If Dick says something, I want, I want dinner early tonight. Oh, I wish we could do that. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, so you, you can have fun with these as much as, uh, as using them. You will get the one-liners. Uh, I'm gonna let Valerie know which ones we didn't get to, number one. Number two, your questions now, or just I had a wonderful time, you know, make me feel good, or I didn't enjoy, I'm sorry I came, I'm sorry I wasn't here. Uh, Haley, you're a new face there, where are you from? Oh, I live in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> in the middle of nowhere? I'm up by Kirksville, Missouri. Oh. Yeah, well, you're right. <laughs> it's okay. I'm glad to have you. I really wish we could have done this on site. Uh, 
cost-wise, it would have been very expensive. But just so you know, uh, pre-COVID, I ran into a little lung cancer and they took out the lobe, you know, the lobe of the tumor. The good news is no chemo, no radiation. Uh, the not so good news was, Nancy, uh, please stay away from, from crowds. So I've been sidelined from some of the very big conferences that I've had the ability to go to, still get asked, but people like Ruth say, you know what, we just want the content. We can do a Zoom. So God bless Ruth. God bless you all. Thank you so much. You were a wonderful audience, and I'm very appreciative. Email me, nancy at telephone. You can get a moment for the Tara. Just we'll do that. 314, nancy, N-A-N-C-Y, at, and then telephone doctor, all one word, dot com. Email me if you'd like. Phone number, if you have a question, is 314. Always take a little breath between each of those numbers. 314-276-1012. 314, take a breath. 276, take a breath. 10, 12. Everybody got it. Then. Nancy, could you give that email one last time? I can. Nancy, N-A-N-C-Y, at telephone, all spelled out, doctor, D-O-C-T-O-R, dot com. Thank you. You're welcome. Great information, Nancy. Oh, God bless. Thanks, Cindy. That it, it is, and I, I hate to say it myself, but it's the simplicity of it and the fun of it, I believe, makes everybody say, wow, I wasn't expecting that much fun, and I'm glad. So if you came out of here smiling, laughing, and can use just a couple of these techniques, you'll make me happy, you'll make Ruth very happy, and I'm sure everybody else at, at Central. Uh, Again, your questions are important. I don't have a hard stop. If you Nancy, have I've got a burning question, and 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 I just got to ask: How long should an email be to somebody? <laughs> well, obviously, it depends on the question that you're answering, if there is one. But in today's world, what I hear from people like you, and I could take a survey right now, uh, everything is so quick and fast today. Some people, you know, want, want a sequel to write a sequel to Gone with the Wind when they do an email. <laughs> My our rule of thumb with telephone doctor is it's got to fit the page of the screen. You know what I mean? It shouldn't, you shouldn't have to roll down to finish your email. If you do, use an attachment and just say, you know, I don't want this email to, to ruin your day. So, you know, I'm putting the attachment of of, of the longer stuff on, on an attachment uh, that shouldn't take much time. Your questions are important to me, even if they come later today or tomorrow. Now I'm in Florida and at almost time, the sun is calling me, but I'm, you know, I'm not there yet. Uh, but I do answer all emails. As far as the length of your emails, do it on Word and then edit it from there because you'll find that there are words that don't need to be. Hmm. But, Good advice. That is right. Okay. So all the people that I see, one, two, th one, two, three, four, five, five, ten, five, I got to see 15 people. Oh, wait, there's people over here. There's another page. <laughs> oh, look at that. Okay. <laughs> Go back and forth. I got Amanda. We got Rachel, Karen, Laura. Laura's got a big group there. All righty. If you enjoyed yourself, please tell your friends. And if you didn't, keep your mouth shut. God bless you all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being a part of Golden Nuggets. And please, I'd love to hear from you. Ruth, thank you. Laura, thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Thanks, Nancy. Have a great day. You too. Thank Everybody you. Welcome. You're all welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're my first Fox News. <laughs> it looks great from our end. You look great on the big screen. Oh my goodness. Take oh wait, I gotta take a picture. Don't go away. Oh. Okay. So everybody say I love telephone doctor. Look at the like Okay. Oops. There we go. Wait, I hit video. Don't go away. I hate when that happens. <laughs> oh shoot. Oh, it's fun to be Nancy. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Where's Amy? There we go. Okay. Where's financial, Jennifer? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I got it. Anybody mind? I if I 
if I post uh, all those, I mean, we're not going to use, well, the names are on there, but they won't be able to see them. Maybe you get an obscene phone call. Who knows? <laughs> Gently hang up. <laughs> um, anybody got a favorite nugget that they like that they'll remember real quick? Jessica, Lisa, Alan, you've been awfully quiet. What's going on? <laughs> oh. Do you have a favorite golden nugget? Oh, man, I'm going to start with the very first one. I just love ASAP. Good. I'm glad you like that. Yeah. And, you know, we, we didn't cover in total how important it is to, to smile when you're on the phone. Uh, it, those people that tell me, well, they can't, they don't know if I'm smiling or not. They are so, so wrong. Yes, they are. They, you, you can hear it. And for whatever reason, there's not a woman listening that doesn't understand the power of a smile. You all understand the power of a smile. Some reason I can't get guys to understand how important it is to smile. <laughs> but that, even a grin, Alan, is good, like you're doing. <laughs> but it's not a smile without showing your teeth. If you're showing your teeth, you got to smile. Otherwise, you're just grinning. So show your teeth. All right. Oh, I, Lisa, I have a room. Uh, I just repainted. I love that color orange for your room. Yeah. I. What room is that? Don't tell me your bedroom. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's my office. Good. It's one right. of my daughter's rooms. Yeah. Bright and cheerful. That's great. All right. We got a fireplace behind there. We got okay. Everybody's good. I'm available. Like I say, if you need me, I am going out now and uh i'm here i'm here for you thank you for being part of nancy's life i appreciate it closing up bye-bye okay we'll be breaking for lunch and we'll see everybody